we finished off last time with um, Zed holding in his hands oh, God. the prayer book from the slain priest of Shthakwa. He's kind of thumbing through why do, it. Why do I feel like this is the book in Baldur's Gate 3 with the angry face on the front? I, I feel like he shouldn't be flipping through the book. I can't help myself. Well, if you uh, scoot into the inventory page of the party sheet, the third item down it says Kabbalist Prayer Book. Can we have it as a priest? Entitled The Speaker in Dreams. Ooh. Is there notes on it? Uh, if you open it up, uh, I might as well. Is, is oh, it, is I it, see. Is it okay to share the fun with everybody? Yeah, of course. Okay. All right. These so, spells, aphasia. I've never heard of that one. Uh, let's see here. So the very first page is. Oh, anybody. I guess everybody can open the book up and feel free to open it up and flip through it. Um, via the um, the party sheet, but the very first page, it's. Um, Looks like almost like an etching of a massive frog like creature as a looks like a trio of priests hurl willing or unwilling supplicants into the maw of this creature. And up in the top right corner, there is a stylized key on a background of um, circular black. Uh, crown atop of it. There's no explanation for these. This is um, like an ink uh, sketching in paper. Um, then and then there's um, this one. The spells are interspersed in between um, stream of consciousness thought that's just kind of like poured out onto the page. Um, some in the common tongue. Some in strange. Um, strange script that you don't recognize, a different language, a different alphabet. Uh, but you kind of get the rough idea of the spell. Aphasia is a term to that um, means pe you, you lose the understanding for language. The second... Um, the second actual... Maybe like a chapter after a bunch of notes and stuff like that, is a frog-like creature um, on a bed of writhing tentacles. It looks like it's taking in sacrifices as a group of uh, um, people in silhouette look on, and it's clearly labeled in the common tongue, Shithagwa. Uh, then there's um, some more rambling, and in that rambling, uh, you give the words the reality wrinkle. There is another word that appears fairly frequently. It is vormis. And from what you can kind of understand, um, vormis is some sort of interdimensional supplicant to Shithakwa. The um, the spell that's kind of described is something like um, very similar to Asami's uh, backpack. It's a it's a way to um, create that effect for a shorter period of time. It's called Arcane Pocket. The third um, kind of chapter is highlighted with uh, just a mass of tentacles and mouths and um, looks like on cloven hooves. It's almost it almost reminds you of um, this creature that you just encountered, um, except way more to the extreme, um, like a mouth uh, 
the the feet are almost like trunk like as opposed to like animalistic. Uh, you can s- definitely see where he was. Um, if this is the author of the book, where he was inspired from, there's a bunch more notes. And in these notes, um, apparently somebody by the name of the Blessed has uh, figured out a way to temporarily and intermittently unlock the gate to the dimension from um, wherein the Vormis dwell. And on occasion, one will come through their gate. And from the wrinkles of reality, they go to be entertained, whatever that means. The spell is called Authenticating Gaze, and it is um, it's basically just a, a quick um, appraisal check for books. Doesn't seem to be particularly powerful. Then there is a um, rather extreme passage um, where almost like a a third language, a language that Zed kind of. It's almost like. If you've heard it before, but you can't quite place it. And if you dig through it, uh, you see names. Names of things that seem familiar to you, but you just beyond the grasp of your recognition. But the name Shithakwa appears uh, once, specifically in its proper form. And then again, later on, um, but it is spelled differently, and you don't know if it has a different meaning or it is a different entity or something else. Oh, I, I've read enough to know Raleigh and Dagon and Nagurath. Yeah. <laughs> Azatoth at the bottom, Cthulhuet from the stars. Yeah, there's uh, that. And then following up that is a... Um, a picture of looks like a humanoidal creature that resembles the mummified creature in the uh, temple where you guys encountered Veltargo uh, with the tentacled face and the large alien eyes, um, the three fingered hands, strange alien script, um, and in that alien script. Uh, Zed gets the meaning of another spell called Restful Sleep. And then the next page continues with more of that alien script and another um, another depiction of this entity. Um, this is the entity known as the Speaker in Dreams. It's got um, eyes on the back of his hands and um, tentacles for um for nose and mouth the spell is confusion and then the final final picture is just like a swirl of madness and and script um from what you can make out um it would probably take years to correctly interpret and discern exactly what that means if it means anything at all it looks important though well I've got time I notice uh, is this book something that we scribe out of can reuse uh, I notice like restful sleep is a bard spell yeah you can use that it's a first level spell uh, in in this game, I, I'm willing. I um, I just divide it into uh, white magic and dark magic. Uh, Restful sleep would be a white magic spell. So that would be something that you could you could learn how to use as a wizard. Okay, but it'd need to be transcribed 
Is this something that the Bard could also transcribe? Absolutely. Um, with the Bard, though, you only have so many spells known that you're... Well, I could read it if it were a scroll. I could cast off the scroll, no problem. Um, correct? Mm -hmm. or, would I, or would I need to usually use magic device to check? I guess it's listed on the Bard's... Yeah, you, you could learn how to yeah. use it as a Bard as one of your known spells. Yeah. yeah. As this used Is as this as the source, but... If we scribe it or cast it from the book, is it gone? Yeah, you can't. It, it's you can't do it like that, like a spell. Um, okay. You can't draw the power out of it unless you actually wrote the the scroll. And I, every one of the spells, I could click and read the spell, but I couldn't. All the images don't click to anything. Oh, the images don't. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Oh, question. Yes. Since we're doing the modified spell like you described light, <laughs> dark magic light magic and you kind of can cast anything um how is use magic device still useful absolutely or it, because I, I guess it would be other other different um uses still yeah and, and you could also use it as like uh if it's not a spell that you know but it's on a scroll Okay. I, I see what you're saying with if everybody scroll, everybody spells on everybody's spell list. But if I'm looking at it like um, if it's kind of like a, a spell, like for instance, the um, I still had Arthur use the um, this the spell the scroll check to use the scroll when he was uh, summoning the Soul Eater. Because it was a higher level. It was a higher that. level. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess anybody could have probably done that. Yeah, use magic device. Just because of the... Just because, yeah, because yeah, yeah. of the lack of magic devices probably would be less utilitarian. Um, I think I'll still keep investing in it just for those cases where... Because I think Asami used it to open the magic door and... Yeah. yeah. So that was that was a beneficial use of it. So it yeah, she used it to um, to basically hijack the energy of the uh, of the key, to, um, and and force it into the key to to open the uh, the secret door. Yeah. So that's the the second uh, panel, Shithakwa. So uh, this is kind of like how Disney ran out of copyright and all the corruption, and this is Kermit the Frog. <laughs> out of copyright. Yeah. Okay. Just wait till you get to the new Winnie the Pooh. Yep. I hope. <laughs> Tinkerbell becomes uh, open domain. Yeah. Year two. So oh, that's not going to be good. Uh, Peter Pan was a movie I liked as a kid. I'm guessing I don't want to see it as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> and that was that was the last image there. Okay. These are interesting images you pulled up. Yeah. All right. So that's the speaker so, dreams. And, yeah, I see the scribblings that we can assume is a language if one were to learn that language is there a way to identify what it is now or, or is it so foreign we can't even say what it is yeah say? i think right now it's so foreign you can't really even say what it is it, it would be like um never having encountered cyrillic before and then gotcha there's an alphabet there there has to be some sort of context for it which you'll probably um probably gain in your travels yeah you get the vibe though that these aren't your normal travels <laughs> this isn't the vacation destination for <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i recognize some things from my dreams so you do and it's isn't this yeah the speaker is the distant star we seek is that right uh you might interpret it that way so, can hold on. Sorry. It's all right. Can Z, Z now scribe scroll 
Now that you're a wizard? I guess I could, couldn't I? Is that a wizard function? Let me look. Mm -hmm. I think they get the feet free at first level. Special ability. Scribe Scroll, I do have it. You gain Scribe Scroll as a bonus feat. Yep. So, wow. So, so you scribe just about anything. Yeah. And Asami can can use those scrolls as well as yourself. Well, that restful sleep, I think, would be very helpful for myself and for yeah. the people that are slowly going, um, what's the word? I don't want to say insane. They're slowly becoming enlightened to the yeah. point of death. Yeah, it definitely would. Um, what is this ability? And void awareness. What is that? Your ability to recognize the void allows your body to react to magical manifestations before you're even aware of them. Okay. Uh, that saves. Never mind. Okay. I'm fascinated. I'd love to hold on to this book. And look at the cleric. Side-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? I said, I'd like to hold on to this book. As I, I stare over it, or, or side glance at, at Avis. I'm you good wish with to it. keep a religious text of it's, it's It's an uh, intellectual pursuit. Promise I. Worship no deity. And any insight will show that's true. Well, from the perspective of understanding the enemy, this would definitely be something you'd want to take and study, absolutely. Yeah. The problem oh, no, with understanding I... such of an enemy is it can understand you back. Oh, right, true. Oh, wait, actually, as is Azoth is somebody I am currently pursuing more knowledge. And as a thought was listed in that mm -hmm. text, wasn't he? He was the very last one. Perfect. Yeah, I, I tuck it in my backpack. Clint madness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Suppose I can do not much, not much more than warn you. Oh, I'll surrender it at some point. We, we, there's plenty that we can benefit from this for the time being. And I promise not to use it in a harmful way. You would th assume anything from that deity is not meant to be harmful. It's knowledge. Even all I knowledge seek. Can hurt. It's just just the knowledge of the uh, universe. That's all I seek. Steve Martin would say, "That's all I need." Several minutes go by as you've thumbed through it and interpreted what you can from it. Um, Luna's curious about it, but she'll leave you to your uh, madness. To your sorting. It looks like uh, it's not like any kind of magic that she's ever encountered before. Uh, even uh, Veltargo's prayer book, uh, which I think she may or may not possess. Um, Veltargo's prayer book was as as bizarre as it was, was pretty vanilla compared to this. He was not knowledgeable. Not in this way, like this guy is. Um, and he's dead. You we get, don't have to speak with dead. You get the vibe that um, at one point in time... My apologies. I was um, I'm quite a bit late, but I'm here now. Oh, you're fine. No, that's no problem at all. Uh, you get the vibe in the readings that at one point, 
this gentleman, who still remains unnamed, um, had aspirations uh, to become the blessed. Um, but his life was cut short, and uh, whatever plans he might have been planning. But he wanted to be the blessed of uh, Thagwa. Right? Yes. Yeah. He was obviously chasing the wrong path. You get the... Um, from from what you read in in the tome, um, the words the the wrinkles in reality, the reality wrinkle, uh, you know it's like an actual physical place here in Lankamar, um, up in the Marsh District, and yep. there seems to be some sort of um, almost like. Um, a place nearby where they they're able to take these uh, disjointed vormies uh, and and store them or entertain them or supplicate them or save them until they are put to use. The um, they seem to be some sort of um, interdimensional humanoid, um, some sort of primal creature from someplace else someplace that isn't here that the blessed is able to call intermittently he's able to entice entice one through a gate in the wrinkles in reality what would you use a vormis for don't know is it uh, unleash against somebody? Is it some right? Is it uh, something illicit? Is it so you can get into nightclubs because you got a trendy friend? <laughs> and Arthur, you have the um, while Zed's combing over this. Um, I don't even know what you would call this tome. Oh, my precious. <laughs> uh, well, he's combing over this. I guess arcane might be the um, the kindest description of it. It is um, it maybe demented, or um, it's it's it seems like it's madness put to paper. Um, and I'm if you can see in the uh, oh okay. What I'll do is I'll show you guys uh, some of the inscriptions. Let's see here. Because you guys... Do you want me to drag it back? I just put it in my No, backpack. I should be able to find it. Yeah, I hope I didn't miss anything too vital. No. Nothing, no, nothing, no, nothing, nothing. Just a little show and tell. Um, All right. This is the uh, the, the not follow the darkness, but you know, it's the, well. these are some of the etchings from uh, the Kabbalist prayer book. Hmm. I can see a theme. And on that one, Happy. there's the name Shathakwa inscribed down in the far corner. This kind of is sort of reminiscent of um, the spectral creature that you faced. Um, less extreme, less tentacled. Only one mouth, not five or six. Uh, only three um, trunk-like feet as opposed to maybe a dozen. Uh, then there's a bunch of... Um, There's a, there's a passage in extremely scripted uh, flowing ink in the middle of the tome. And the word Shithakwa appears a couple times in there. As the book goes on, uh, this entity here, they seem to label this entity as the speaker in dreams. And then there's another... Another depiction of it. And the final one 
is just kind of like um, stream of consciousness, thoughts of madness, places beyond the void. But Arthur, you have the um, the silver dagger from the the Thieves Guild rogue who perished in this chamber. No doubt a victim of those two spiritual creatures. Two spectral creatures. Ah, uh, I'm beginning to remember what happened. The, uh, the priest and whatever creature this was that he called. I don't want to spoil any of the... Uh, it was just a dressed up Adiug, but <laughs> dressed up Adiug in an alip form, but with the tentacles and the mouth and the It was unfortunate whatever it was. It was de it definitely seemed like something beyond the stars. And uh Odiugs in the sewer are not common in Lankamar, it's not like Something that they use. It's uh, Lankamar is not one of those places where they use like um, magical creatures or something like that to to do a, a mundane chore. Like have um, you know they don't have like magical trains or it's not like Aberon or uh, the high fantasy cities. These are old passageways, and a lot of them are just for the moving of water, which there seems to be a lot of. What would you guys like to do? You're pretty much unharmed from that encounter. I mean, uh, Avis has um, just a little... A little lagging wisdom damage, but nothing. We still have further to go in here? Uh, I th think this is what you came here to look at. Was this room? I believe well, there's so. There's a door ahead of us, though, too. Yeah, well, yeah there's a door up there. There's a door down there. I see them. Mm -hmm. Why can stop my, there? Can I have my mage hand open that door? Is that a thing I can do? Um, I'm not certain. You can have uh, the open close cantrip does that. Um, I don't have yeah, I don't have open close. Uh, Luna still has her uh, unseen servant. I might be able to apply oh. enough force to open the door. Open the oh, door. There he is Ernie, the unseen servant. You want that opened up? Seems safe enough. Uh, if if not a little stuck um, from the uh, the dampness. Same with the other door. If you wanted to open that up, this opens up opens up into the main tunnel. Uh, you can hear the sounds of the water, the um, the channel flowing to the south. North or south? Uh, north is back to the way you came. I meant uh, the doors. Hello. Oh, they lead the same place. Never mind. Yeah, both lead to the same place. Anybody else coming? All right. So, uh, move my guy. I'm in the car. Yeah, no worries, Ness. So there was a down here is a spiral staircase, I guess. Oh no, it's no, no spiral staircase. Okay, yeah, I don't know what I was seeing. You said north is the way we were, right? Yeah, you, yeah. you can see the passageway to the north yeah. uh, on the other okay. side of the channel. Uh, so, and if you south walked all the dead end. Well, south continues on. There's um, there's more tunnels, and more channels, and stuff like that. Uh, there's nothing I have actually. 
mapped no out. No adventure. Or, yeah. Okay. Um, we've seen everything then, haven't we? Or... I believe so. Okay. And I'm trying to remember up this passageway with the bars. Yeah, that there wasn't anything there. That led to. Um, you think that leads up to where uh, Arthur's room is, Arthur's basement. Oh, fancy in room uh, uh, flushing. Oh, that's the end of the map. That's okay. What yeah. So I think we've we've visited everything, right? Um, yeah, and, you've roughly okay. seen everything there is to see. Then, then I guess we're out of here. All right. Uh, up through that passageway where you guys are all gathered around, uh, that door yeah, should be and open. Didn't we come in through there? Came in through there, yep. Yeah. Okay, then we'll go out through there. Oops, it says one character goes away, I can't oh. see the other. Dun, 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 dun. Are you waiting for an ambush? Is that why we're doing this? Nope, nope, not at all. committee stuff? No, I just didn't know whether you guys wanted to go that way or you wanted to go out. Or um, you're thinking we should talk to the guy who has his base down here? Is that what you're... Yeah, well, to? he's definitely waiting. Um, and that is definitely the way up that you are familiar with. If you made your way around, you could probably bypass it. Like If you went, um, say, east or northeast on that passage or south on the passage eventually you would come to an area where you would um, find another way up there's all kinds of um, just you can see the street access some 20 feet up um, in several spots uh, but you have to pop the manhole cover off and stuff like that and watch for traffic I, I guess the real question is do we want to talk to that guy or not does anybody have a reason to talk to him was he an ally? I think we had the reason to talk to him because we were doing this for him. Okay, then let's go back and talk to him. I don't remember where he was. Yeah, he, I was, think he was. He was just right here. Just keep going okay. around the corner. He's uh, he's actually standing right in front of where Luna is. And uh, okay. he opens the door there. And Avis, I think you had reason to talk to him. Is that right? Um, I think it was Arthur. Yeah, Arthur. I, didn't, I didn't know if Arthur wanted to talk with him. Or... Okay. Arthur? Mm. We look at you? We look at him? Yeah. I'm a little bit frazzled right now. I forget the reason why. Um, uh, because we walked into their base? Yeah. Ah, right. <laughs> yeah, you... you you made a, a ramp over out of um, like an old workbench, and then you walked over, and then you kind of walked into their little smuggling operation. Not, and uh, Akai was sort of expecting you to do that sooner or later. So um, a couple of the guards went up and got him, came down, conversed with them, and. Um, he said that, uh, you know, we used to be buddies with um, the former resident. There's no reason why you and I can't be friends kind of thing. Yeah, I remember that. Um, and he, um, he, ta he told you the story about um, how there was some Kabbalists and uh, Popoff had some interest in them. At one point, then when uh, pop off stopped, um, when he moved out, I guess so to speak, um, these uh, Kabbalists became more and more incursive on their area. So uh, Akai and some of his men launched a raid, killed the head in charge. Few of them fled. Uh, they kind of thought that was the end of it. And um, when they sent a couple people back a couple days later, they didn't come back. So uh, and then there was been some a couple other people came back and they were they weren't quite right. So there, there was something there that um, 
they had warded this area against, but they weren't sure exactly what it was. We know what happened to the people. Go ahead. I can assure you that the threat is certainly dealt with. What, uh, anything that I should know? Or? Well, we found your men. Oh. Not living, was, I'm assuming. More specifically, we found their remains. I see. Feared the worst. Been several weeks, so. Mm. It was quite an unfortunate uh, way they must have died, considering the nature of the creatures. Creatures. A nature I cannot really describe myself. I feel like somebody else might want to describe that. So we could tell the story of the battle. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Do it. She does so with glee. Um, Harmony. Yeah, yeah. I'm finding my skills here. She uh, takes the hit from Arthur and describes exactly how the combat went down, but embellishing how heroic our party members were. Obviously, if anyone did anything dumb, that gets left out. Uh, we defeated the encounter. She describes that the enemy's wailings. I'm trying to remember it myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, like you know, babbling almost. Us. Yeah, but the, that was you know that's nothing for for us. We were able to resist it. She doesn't mention that it was because of her performance. It was because of your ability to resist it. And uh, then we just... She described... Because I remember she rolled a humongous knowledge check on the, the enemy. So she was able to describe what they were and what their abilities were and how they came to be and then how we defeated them. So all of this in a perform oratory storytelling. All right, give us a perform check. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be an outback order, right? <laughs> there it is. All right. See how well she does. Eh, it's not it, terrible. No, it's a twenty. Um, it's, just, it's it's impressive. See, um, we may uh, have some sort of. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's 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 good to be friendly with your neighbors. I think, uh, I think the fact that um, you've left your back door open, Arthur, and um, we don't, uh, we didn't want to betray your confidence by going and peeking inside, even though we were very curious about your um, your basement, and especially um, what you may or may not have done with Clavoff. The uh, he looks at you. He's trying to get a read on you. We heard him the other night, uh, baying. Out of character, does the name ring a bell? Yep. I might be forgetting. But... Does not. It's the big dog. <laughs> I assume it's the dog, okay. I'm assuming it was the dog that Avis went, no. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't it... even Arthur. I don't think it was Arthur. He gave you a name now, a name that you can put with it. Ah, we didn't yes, know the name. that. Did not know the name. Mm, yes, well, Clavath, let's just say that he tried to get in our way, and we had to press forward however we could. I hope that's not a problem or a concern. No, no, it was, um, it was Popoff's, Popoff's pride and joy, uh. Cost, cost me two of my men one evening. But that was my own fault. I had intruded upon an area that was not mine to intrude upon. And uh, to eat my face. He tends to do that, yes. Um, I don't know from where he comes from. He always appears at the... Just at the right time, it seems. Uh, so we tend to avoid anything across the channel. And um, 
we would appreciate it if you would avoid without any further notice from us uh, anything on our side in the future um, some curiosities is understood um, of course of course I understand I, the last thing I would want is to make enemies of of another guild precisely precisely and and you, we did have an extensive business dealings with Popoff. Um, we would procure material for him. I don't know if you're in the same business as him. I'm dabbling in certain businesses. But I imagine that I imagine that in due time hey, I will have need of. Like, I'm gonna go I imagine that in due time that I will require your assistances, and I will be and I will be willing to pay. Inadequate price for these uh, services rendered. Excellent. Uh, well, if if you wish, um, you can uh, use our halls and access the basement of your place again, or you can um, use the basement of the Blue Canary and, and exit via the street of the Blue Canary if you wish. It's up to you. He's standing by an open door now, and in the door you see... Um, he gets a flight of stairs that goes up. And then you can kind of see the, the passageways uh, lead back towards through the uh, the various crates and, you know, rolled up carpets and that sort of thing. Sacks and stuff like that. He has set along the walls uh, back to where the um, steel reinforced door was with the eye slit. Or you can go up, um, go up this flight of stairs right here to the uh, the kitchen of the Blue Canary, and then you can exit. He'll he'll accompany you if you do it that way. It's up to you. But he did tell you that your uh, your back door, so to speak, is is still open. I.e., your secret door, and most likely yeah. your door to your basement. Yeah. As much as I'd love to continue sightseeing, I think that's enough for today. Yeah. I'll simply head. Ba- I'll simply head back in the way I came. Another time, then. Hmm. I do plan to return to the Blue Canary. It seems like such a lovely establishment. You're always welcome, Arthur. As are your friends. With with that being said, I do not believe we need to take up any more of your time. We will head off. Well, a good day to you, and uh, enjoy the Spring Festival. I shall. Imagine we start heading off to uh, back the way we came. I would think so. Uh, it's a very simple matter to recross the little uh, the little makeshift bridge that you made. And then once, once the last person's over, pull it back over. Close the door. Yeah. You could store the bridge in your, uh, your little... I want to uh, store that in my house, yeah. In your house or in the workshop? Mm. The flesh vault? <laughs> I have several places to store it. I'll figure out the best place to store it eventually. Okay. All right, it's now, now it's probably um, midday. Early afternoon, if anything. Okay. Wasn't there something to do at Avis's church, or is that? I think we were supposed to investigate. Um, yeah, I think we had something we was on to drugs. Do. Yeah. The gallows. The uh, yeah the the gallow fields is, it keeps coming up as a location. The um, uh, AKA. Uh, Beggar's Alley, aka Nightmare Alley, keeps coming up as a as a location. Uh, you now have this um, this word, uh, this name of this establishment called the Reality Wrinkle. I think somebody oh, rolled a rolled a uh, rolled a knowledge local check to determine that uh, it's like uh, like an occultist bookstore. Right, right. In yeah. the um, 
in the Marsh District, which isn't far from where the um, the Gallo Fields and Swan Row Courthouse and Nightmare Alley, uh, they're all kind of right around there. And there's and the area that you said in the swamps where they pull the vormis and such that had nothing to do with the temple that we ransacked early on. Uh, you get the vibe that the where they're pulling the vormis from isn't anywhere in this dimension. No, but they didn't you say they were storing them somewhere? Or they're what? storing them somewhere near the wrinkles of reality. Okay. And that's not the Marsh area. No, you get the vibe that that's near this bookstore. Oh, well, let's visit the bookstore. All right. Anybody want to do anything else while they're... No, I'm a, I, feel like I'm a, I feel like I'm a little focused on getting rid of those rival sorcerers because I definitely could use a position amongst okay. the guild. All right. Where are they? Well, the and other ones, gallows. the yeah, the gallows, the Shadakwa stuff. Oh. It is that is one of the rivals. Okay. All yeah, right. Those who hear, that's what they were called. Yeah. Yeah. Those who hear, spider, well as, spider. the Brotherhood of the Spider. Yeah, that's right. Let's visit them. Where has my pinger gone? There it is. All right. So um, if you'll notice on the map, there's the Street of the Gods. You could probably uh, pick out the Church of Ita, um, the Marsh Gate. Uh, north of that is Hazy Street. And you get the... Um, you ask around a couple places and stuff like that, and um, but once you get close, you find that the um, the reality wrinkle is right on Hazy Street. So, as far as pings go, that would be right in this area here. If you're able to see that or not. Well, it's off for a second. Where are, that's at the E in Street. It's, yeah. Where yeah. Where are we currently? Uh, the Arthur's house is, uh, south of, see that big, um, big blue, big blue circle? Yeah, wasn't it on Cash Street? South of Carter and Craft. Ah. So let me, let me do another circle up here. So So this is the area of the reality wrinkle, and the other circle, um, between Wall and Carter Street to the south. That's Arthur's neighborhood. Well, we just got yeah. sewers, right? So we kind of smell yucky. Yeah, you could probably use a cleanup. Yep. Yeah, we should definitely do that. So get out of our waders and into our regular outfits. Mm -hmm. And we also cast spells, so maybe yeah. we take a day to clean and yeah. rest. Yeah. That's true, too. You could. You could definitely, too. The festival won't last forever, is the thing. The festival will last probably about the next month or so. Oh, never mind. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of like Mardi Gras. Oh, milk, milk we're, the on, we're on the third day. I thought there was thir three days, isn't it? No, no yeah, third. yeah, you're on the third day. Okay. It, uh, yeah. Actually, this is the second day. It started on the 29th of February, which is like Chameleon Day, the extra... The leap day, and then you're, today's just the first. So if you took right, it, okay. took a day, got everybody uh, totally healed up and chilled out and did whatever you want to do, it would be the second. Or you you can push on right now after like um, with your spells and stuff like that. You can freshen up pretty quickly. Yeah, suppress vegetation's here. Yep. Um, as far as resources used, I'm good. I've I, I still have plenty left. I honestly didn't spend that much either. Yeah. 
So uh, I'm I think to... Avis wants to get rid of some of that uh, that ability to score damage, though. Yep, probably we would, but it depends on if everybody else is fine with taking a rest. Oh, I I'm good either way. If you want a rest, then take a rest. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I think I would be better for you without the ability damage. Yeah. Yeah, no. you would be, and that is true. <laughs> Do you have access to uh, lesser restoration? You just did you not didn't um, probably didn't prepare it. Didn't I prepare really it. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah. Okay. You might want to prepare it at all times now. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna start. But at least have you're one. like say sewer, and I'm going. I need to shift a couple things. At least have one prepared. Yeah, it's what? you don't anticipate always losing points. So like it'll it'll come back on its own tomorrow. So you don't even have to prepare it. Um, do you want me just uh, do a uh, do an overnight rest or? Yeah, we also took a we also took a little bit of damage. Some of us didn't you? didn't we? Some um, may have. I don't think so. Uh, they didn't do physical damage. All they did was will damage, wisdom. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you could die due to the lack of the will to live. Yeah, you would be in a coma. Well, if we're going to rest, then Asami would head back to the last chance and do a performance before the evening is up. And she has one question. That is, does the last chance have like a uh, hot tub? Uh, no. Not a hot tub, per se. You could get, you could get a tub for your room. Ah, uh, it's okay. Uh, just regular cleanup is fine, then I'll meet folks. It looks to me like, um, Zed's apartment is closer than the last chance is to our destination of the Marsh District. Yes, it's yeah, on the way. Someone else's mm -hmm. place is even closer, then that's probably a good place to gather up, right? Yeah, the uh, the Church of Ita is uh, the closest. That's, well, then let's do that. Church. It's Avis's oh, yeah. church. Right around the corner. Gotcha. Yeah. Heck, there's a shortcut. Do that. Definitely is. Yeah. The way to get to the church from uh, his apartment. Yeah, that. I'll, I'll show you what that geomorph, that shortcut looks like. Kind of like a windy, mazy alley kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. And uh, it, it's, um, it's oriented correctly. So you would come in probably somewhere around here and exit to Avis's church somewhere around there with multiple ways to get around there i've never noticed have problems walking through uh, narrow streets <laughs> uh. <laughs> whatsoever especially day one in this world <laughs> all right so let's, all right. let's push on to the next day uh anything else that you wanted to do for this day i'm just gonna, gonna start go ahead arthur Arthur's just going to make sure that everything is set up in his house, like all the doors are uh, properly closed, like all the secret doors are done. Okay. Just going to continue tidying, make sure that the house is make sure the house is uh, good for when I buy some proper furnishing for it. Okay. There's the performance for Fatty's place to help pay the bills. Okay, done. Bills are getting paid. I'm going to start uh, researching this book as much as I, I know it's not going to happen today or tomorrow. It's a longer term type of, like when I level, maybe I can take an ability tied to it. So yeah. I'm just going to start that process. Okay, great. Yeah. And uh, if you want to, um, I don't know how many hours it takes you to learn a spell out of a spell book, but you can crap, you can uh, put it in your own spell book. Uh, probably when I level, because I can only have. Actually, oh, yeah, I can. have the ability to cast a list of spells, and I select what I cast each day. So, all right, I'll yeah, go through. Your spellbook can have every spell in it, hypothetically. Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah. All right. I'll spend time and money um, to slowly absorb those spells. Okay. I'll I'll research it. It won't happen today, but. All right. All right. Excellent. Uh, so, around what time do you guys want to take on the uh, the reality wrinkle? Or did you have something else in mind? I'm trying to. I don't recommend we meet up after breakfast and start the day. Yeah, yeah. Like earlier in the day, like maybe the nine uh, o'clock. The Gallo Fields. That's a little. Uh, not necessarily related to the Reality Wrinkle. Reality Wrinkle is its own little entity. It's a it's a bookstore. Um, Did you process the rest? The um, it's a bookstore. It looks like it's open to the public. Uh, the, we didn't get our overnight rest, actually. Oh yeah, thank you. I was like, I was trying to fix my spells. <laughs> Aha! There we go. You better. All right. Um, this is the Gallo Fields. Um, the far south end, you notice like a big opening there. It's not a big opening. What that is, is that is the uh, the very front face of the, or actually the rear face of the Swan Row Courthouse. And um, let's see if I've got a picture of the Swan Row Courthouse for you. I think I just have like a map. Map. What I'll do is I will. I'll just briefly disable the line of sight so you get a, a look at it. Uh, it's, Aha! Mm. It's a rather large. It's like a rather large abandoned courthouse. I just turned the line of sight back off, just in case yeah, you guys. Yeah, I saw bones in that room at the top. Not <laughs> being it. No, that is a um, abandoned for about the last decade or so. Uh, it's rumored to be haunted. Um, Pop off had even mentioned it that it was a confluence of um, uh, necromantic and perhaps other sort of energies. And um, you don't think it has anything to do with these Kabbalists? They don't seem to have any interest in this area. Um, this is fairly close to the area that they call, um, actually, the, the rear of Swan Row Courthouse is, it enters onto um, Nightmare Alley, which is formerly known as Beggar's Alley. The, that's the area known as Gallowfields, which is right here on the map. On the big map, where the arrow is, <clears throat> this area here, that that area, the um, kind of U-shaped, right there is the Swan Row Courthouse, and that that alley that kind of goes all the way around it and uh, makes its way all the way out to uh, Carter Street. That's the area that they're calling now Nightmare Alley. The um, the area north of uh, the Gallo Fields and that the um, Reality Wrinkle is called the Night Market. Uh, it is a rather tangled worn of buildings. Uh, there's like an old wall that um, kind of surrounds it. It looks like it, at one time it might have been city limits. Uh, it was long since long since surpassed that. But they um, these these old walls they remain, and then in inside those walls, um, there's like a it's like a tangled warren of uh, hovels and alleyways and laneways and there's a couple um 
a couple wells. Um, and you know that just on the on the south side of that is uh, roughly where the reality wrinkle is. Just um, just south of that on Hazy Street. So a veritable tangle of warrens in the uh, Marsh District. And the Marsh District is the poorest district in town. And um, for all intents and purposes, the roughest district in town as well. Um, the City Watch gives it a wide berth. Only the desperate dwell there. And really, it's only like two blocks between um, the rather uh, bustling street of the gods and the, uh, the noble district. The, um, from, from Wall Street to Cheap Street and from Temple Street to the Street of the Gods is basically the extent of the Marsh District. All right. Well, we found our place. Is it open? The reality wrinkle. Yes, it's open. It is. Um, you hear Bing Bing as the, you enter the door. There is a. Uh, let's see here. You think we'd learn to open doors as slowly as possible? <laughs> let's see here. Looks like it's um, just 20 feet wide and probably about 15 feet. There's um, several rows of like bookshelves along the um, left and right corners. There's like a little walkway that leads up to it. Uh, give me the map if you want. Uh, take the line of sight off and I'll give you a description of the storefront. Uh, first thing, you get an impression that there's... Uh, Something not quite right in this place. Uh, the angles formed by the walls, bookshelves, floors, and ceilings seem wrong, as if space itself were warped here. Uh, scrolls and tomes, some bound in materials you do not recognize, fill shelves that line every wall. A small table stands in one corner uh, with two chairs pulled up to it, counter just from the opposite wall. Behind the counter, a brocaded curtain hangs in the doorway. It's designed depicting an alien landscape filled with tentacle creatures of unimaginable monstrosity. There's a, There's a man sitting oh, at the know. counter and he's smoking a, um, I guess you probably call it like a water pipe, maybe a bong. And you've got the, um, the rather uh, harsh odor of some sort of narcotic substance. Welcome to the reality wrinkle. Feel free yeah, to browse I, our, our wares. Yeah, may as a thoughts, dreams be your own, I say to him. He looks confused. Mm. Any way to strike up a uh, detect magic without overtly casting a loud ritual? Um, yeah, you probably could. Okay. Glance around the shelves. You kind of get like a, an underlying um, uh, that like everywhere. It's kind of um, nothing. It's just like a vague. Uh, everything's kind of got this like vague glow to it. Like something's not quite right. Who was it who needed something here, Ray? <laughs> I think I'm good. Uh, we came here for a purpose. I think we wanted just to check out what was going on in terms of the influence. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start flipping around looking for 
any mention of the word Vormis or any of the other stuff, any of the gods. Okay. Um, there's no real mention of um, the, the brocaded curtain is a pretty big hint. There's um, a few of the tomes. Um, you get like the odd misspelled name of some sort of otherworldly entity that uh, claims to have knowledge of. Glance around and say, this seems like amateurish stuff. Where's the real valuable uh, work? What do you mean? What do you mean, my friend? Are you are you a sc I, scholar in these? I... I... I'm definitely not an amateur. I pick up something with the misspelling, like it's uh, stinky garbage. I'm like, this is obviously by an amateur seeking, uh, aimed at a tourist. Um, and, and I scoff at it. I mean, obviously fake. Um, I need real valuable work. I see. Show me your gold, and I will show you the knowledge of the universe. I put the palm a handful of it. Okay, he's kind of like bleary-eyed, like looks at you like, yeah, man, all right, I can. He says, uh, is there uh, any subject that you have a uh, distinct interest in? I'd like to know more about uh, Vormis and uh, Azathoth and uh, maybe uh, what What was the name of the wizard who died? Uh, Talking about Popoff? Pop no, the one that was in the last encounter room we were in that uh, had his throat slit that oh, we pulled oh, yeah. the book from. You didn't get we don't his know actual his name. name, yeah. They're calling, okay. uh, there was the Blessed. Uh, and uh, we're, we're Trying to get a handle on the blessed, so. Well, you'll just have to uh, keep your ears open, then perhaps uh, he will seek you out. As enlightenment often does. But uh, as for these other names, I'm uh, not familiar. <clears throat> insight? Yep. Yeah. Uh, insight. Where is uh, Insight. Is it called insight? I don't see uh, it. Sense motive. It's sense motive. Sense motive. Okay. Oh, mine's great. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. I can't tell by just looking at him. Yeah, you don't know if it's uh, whether he's ignorant of it or just a clerk or um, maybe he's so stoned that. So you promised uh, better works than this trash. Tell me what you have. Wait here. He um, goes to the back for a moment. And he comes out with a... Uh, it's like a large uh, tome in vellum. You can tell it... It looks legitimate. Um, it looks old. And um, it bears a minor... Um, magical uh, it's uh, abjuration minor abjuration he says the um, of course all these treatises are just simply one man's experiences written down the the only way to truly experience it is to journey on your own have you imbibed before i don't need to imbibe to dream yeah. i've certainly dreamed and followed the stars through the reality window i don't know what that is but uh this tome here um is uh 15 gold rilks it's uh it is a treatise on um Spatial travel. 
I look at one of the party members that might have a praise. Is it worth it? Check. What kind of item is it? It's a book. Uh, I'm not good with books. Is uh, not my forte. Maybe. <laughs> and they're fancy. <laughs> so you're saying it's legitimate. All right. I'll give you the 15 then. You said 15? Yes, 15 gold rooks. And, okay. Uh, let's take that off. Two, I think it's at 282. Okay, I hand him the 15. Yeah, it's and, the, uh, the book is entitled Voyages in the Void. Okay. I start reading a bit of it to see if it's of any value. Uh, it describes some things that you've seen Luna do. Um, when she kind of um, kind of blips from one place to the next, it 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 describes that as the uh, the first rudimentary steps of um, truly voyaging into the void, and then it goes on from there. Um, describes what the author believes. Um, the areas between the light in the night sky would contain and the the vastness of the space that he believes and it's uh it's basically just his treatise um but there is um a spell in there called air bubble I look at it and say, "This is this is pretty basic work. Is there nothing more? Summoning rituals, guided dream sequences. Summoning rituals, summoning rituals. What what do you what do you wish to summon? What sort of uh, sort of creature? My dream from beyond the, the void. The dreams. What does anybody wish to summon? What their dreams desire? Can I look at the guy answering him and sort of get a sense if he's a con man or if he's just as cool as... Or... This guy kind of... You get the vibe that he sort of knows what he talk, what he's talking about when it comes to the arcane. Uh, he might have some capabilities. Uh, but he doesn't know who you are, obviously. Is he on drugs? He's definitely on drugs. He's okay. he is he's messed up. Um, <laughs> but you also get the vibe that even though he is as messed up as he is, he's um he's coherent. This is something that um he's pretty accustomed to. Uh you get the vibe that um Anything more, you might have to come to a meeting. <laughs> um, so he's and he's not uh, he's not offering an invitation. He says, um, "I wonder if we could talk him into being more inviting and supportive with the information he's saying to Plum Sweet so talk a little bit. How does one join a cult? Uh, I mean, the curious want to know. Yeah, they definitely do. And you are here, and you're talking. Um, I don't know. How would one go about such things? I think he's tied to Thagwa. Yes, or... Oh, what I'll do is I'll pull out my book, the, the book that we got, put it on the counter, open it, insert his into it, or if it's a book put it on top and tie things together so he gets a good look at what the book is. Yeah, he uh, he stands straight up at that. Like he's previously been like slouching on the on the counter and on his elbow and when you put that on the counter, he stands up straight. And he says, "Where did you come by that, Tom?" Uh, that'll be 15 gold for me to tell you. <laughs> uh I'll offer you 150 for it right now. I'm not selling the book, but I'm seeking more of its time. More of its... Knowledge. 
I wish to delve deeper into the dreams. I see. What uh, what sort of experience do you have with this sort of thing? I'll recite the uh, the prayer that I learned from my friend in the market. Okay. All right. I see. I see. Um, do you? I look at him and say, do you? Because there's a path from that window. And that's what I seek. I have seen. And I will see. I do not see now. Perhaps you should go. I'd love to learn more. Well, come back. Become a friend. It takes time to get to one to know one another. Fine. Anybody else have something they need here? I'll tell him I hang out at the uh, casino. I forget the name of it. The uh, loose dice or whatever. What was it? <laughs> Um, fat chance. I'll tell him I can be found at the fat chance. I'll I'll drop by periodically. I'd love and willing to pay for more information on this. I see. Okay then. Well, uh, I didn't get your name. I'll tell him. Okay. And he tells you and his name is Rovis. Rovis, I'm. Uh, I work here. Most days. All right. I will repeat to him, may Azathoth's dreams be something you find. Should that be what I seek? It's always what you seek. Is this may not be good for you. Does he have things for sale around? Yeah, he has like little trinkets and um, little different... Um, it, it, you get the... You get the very vibe that it's uh, more like curios and doodads. There's nothing like, uh, nothing powerful, nothing. Um, but if you wanted to have like, um, you know, something like an all-seeing eye emblem for, or maybe like a black velvet mat with an all-seeing eye etched into it or something like that. You can finally find something like that here. Maybe a fake crystal ball. Uh, maybe an old, uh, like, a couple old, um, like, uh, like, fossilized chicken feet. Weird, weird, creepy shit. Yeah. Forest records. Yeah. Superstitious garbage. Basically. I seek real magic. Well, you found some. You found the air bubble spell. All right. Thank you, Rovis. Uh, come back. We will talk again, Zed. And friends, of course. Quiet friends. <laughs> quiet friends who just like to look. Farewell, quiet friends who like to look. This guy's creepy. Yeah, I'm getting those vibes. That's probably why uh, Sami's near the door. <laughs> I think I think Avis is already like hanging out outside. Yeah, Avis is outside. She's like, nope. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay, so on Hazy Street, with Avis is outside, it's uh, it's busy. Um, you got the um, the festivals going on. Uh, there's a lot of people making their way around. Um, there's farmers who have set up uh, carts here. Uh, some of the poorer farmers. Uh, there's a lot of people like milling about, stuff like that. There's a lot of uh, a lot of cut pursery and uh, prostitution and drugs and um, all that stuff is all mixed in here. It's kind of an unsavory daytime atmosphere that you don't expect in um, in the city. That's you know fully regulated. But apparently, anything goes here, and it, um, you know, even even like some of the less savory stuff, like slavery, and um, it's all apparent. 
and there's also a, a quite a bit of um, um, revelry, um, but it's kind of like um, it's kind of like off-putting revelry, where it's a bunch of people like gathered in a corner and they're they're smoking something, and there's a there's a um, two prostitutes and clearly they're being propositioned by a handful of men and there's um there's a farmer that's selling um goods that are expired and uh he's it's overpriced for the people who are clearly hungry it's it's not the joyous festival that you've walked through on the way up here where there's singing and dancing and there's music and there's um, people selling, you know, goods and stuff like that, that other people would want at a reasonable price. This is kind of unsavory. Uh-huh. Avis is just watching and waiting for her friends to get out of the shop because she's like, we're yes, done. Bad idea. Yeah. Where we come out. We're done. Okay. So I'll put a um I'll put a mini on the map. If you guys wanna maybe move around. Let's see here. Actually what I can do is I can put you guys right on the map. See how small you are, um, <laughs> <laughs> but each of those each of those squares is five feet, and it is to scale. So, um, on the map right there, if right in right near the center of that uppermost blue circle, um, right by the E on the Hazy Street. I just have to remember which button I'm supposed to hit so I can find the map again. Oh, here's the. Uh, there you go. Oh, there we are. Yes. So it feels so small. So <laughs> insignificant. In the city of 140,000 or seven score thousand smokes. I mean, when the street sign is four times as tall as you are, you feel small. All right. Where did we need to go? There's some other places around here. We, You said they... Toward the uh, Vormis in the area, supposedly. Okay, yeah. Uh, for what you could gather, it's just like hints that they, there was um, there was a place where they kept the Vormis entertained while they waited to put them to use, um, and they referred to it as the warehouse. Yeah. And there are several uh, buildings around nearby that uh, look like they might be abandoned uh, particularly to the north on the way to the night market why don't we go that way anybody else have a direction or something they want to do I want to continue investigating what's going on see if we can find the source my understanding is the illegal drug part is what's controlling people and that's what we are yeah. trying to tamp down okay. the legal drugs it's mm. the brother of the spider is doing that correct or was it those who here yeah there's um there's brother. those who here were the ones who were tinkering with that uh, drug called uh, trance yeah, they, they were the uh sure. yeah is that what it looked like was affecting our no it it looked like he was um he was like smoking an opium okay which would be considered fine here it, it, it's kind of um kind of like a less uh severe form of like a trance was sort of like a real heavy duty opiate yeah, um, that's what we're worried about is the one that's controlling people not to, not people who do with their business but yeah there was uh, uh trance yeah tra- uh, trance was causing a problem um on the streets before you guys shut down the temple of shathakwa in the swamps seem to be the source of it um now it's to a lesser degree it still pops up every now and then but uh nothing to the same extent now everybody in this area wants to stay awake and they've uh they've taken to using a drug called shiver 
which is controlled by the Brotherhood of the Spider. You, you've determined that. And we also know that these are both uh, groups that are watched by the Sorcerer's Guild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're... Um, well, you, you've, you've seen the, um, the Cult of Shithakwa. If there's... Um, it, they do have real magic users in there. Yeah, exactly. They did. So it's assumed the spider does too. You would think so. Yeah, Arthur's definitely interested in uh, getting rid of that competition. So how do we pursue it? Question. This warehouse thing that's where let me be sure i understood what you were saying people who are tranced that are awaiting being tagged with some kind of other responsibility or just kind of chilling out in this warehouse code name area uh, to be taken from that place to where they need to go to serve their masters in some way yeah something like that something along those lines some sort of servants of Suthakwa called the vormis uh, somehow um, the blessed entices them through a gate into his realm which you would assume is here but you're not 100% and so us investigating the warehouse we, we would not we would be out of place certainly uh, it depends on what you would do yeah. you'd probably like to assume it was being watched but And there are like abandoned buildings and stuff like that all over the place in here. It's not like um, people on the streets in this area that appear to be affected by shiver. Uh huh. How do they present themselves? Uh, very disheveled, very um, very crackety. If that's a like a meth like a meth addict very like, yeah very much like a meth or a crack addict um kind of acting um acting in a irrational manner that's kind of alarming if you would you know susceptible to harm from them um obviously you guys probably aren't you're above that um so you're not really too worried about it but if you were like an old lady walking down the street it, this would be terrifying this is like, um, like we can make ourselves appear though we are afflicted by this would take a lot of effort because, like a meth addict would have the teeth that are the gums are receding badly and, and the weight loss is extreme and, and these are things that couldn't be disguised with these. It's not like you could put a cloak on and yeah makeup look like that okay. you can mimic someone who's really early on into shiver mm -hmm. somebody's recently started it yeah i was just thinking of ways we could fit in uh while we're doing investigation you know brainstorming to the group yeah i don't know no herself spell would work yeah, magic definitely would for. Yeah, it just it, it has a has a distinct duration. Yeah. I like the, I like it, but it's not one I use regularly, so I don't add it to my known list. But I suppose if we had a scroll of it or two, we could use it that way. We could probably hand a few gold to one of the addicted that looks like they're in need of a hit and just follow them. There you go. Okay, that's another option. Yeah. Okay, let's make, know, just let's make some per follow. perception checks. You find find yourself a good target. It's not my skill, but I will try. Perception. 
<laughs> My perception says Avis is the best one. <laughs> <laughs> Avis, get us some drugs. <laughs> Okay, why not two percent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they get the. Um... Oh, there's somebody. There's Avis. Uh... Avis doesn't like being called a druggie from the party members. <laughs> <laughs> Call me the addict when you take the book. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess in dealing with poor souls lately, as I've been dealing more with this than most, I suppose, through the temple, I could probably find somebody easily. Oh, that's true. You could just question some of your parishioners. I would probably recognize it. I, there's a chance I could recognize it more due to the temple. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so... Um... Do you want to find somebody that you recognize or somebody that you distinctly don't, but you notice the signs of, like, it, it's, it's the signs of, the signs of uh, use is evident all over the place. Um, but finding a person who might be in the know that would lead you right to where you want to go might be a different. like finding someone that would recognize her might be better. Yeah. more of she okay blessed mother coming to her for help yeah for help you know blessed mother avis what are you doing on the streets doing my best to help those in need of course i haven't I've, seen you in many days i have faltered mm. but it's the it's the dreams i they are horrific Spent the night last night in Nightmare Alley, and spiders are crawling on me the whole time. The um, the cackles in the darkness. The um, I, I slipped off. I could not stay awake. I I awoke, I, imagining I was chased. <laughs> Through uh, through a sodden field that I I couldn't um, couldn't lift my legs, I was just sinking down into a field of fetid muck and um, shapes shapes in the mist coming for me. And thankfully, the uh, the morning sun broke through through the mist, and I awoke before uh, I befell the fate of. Uh, Several others in the alley who perished overnight. Does Avis know that the removed sickness helps with this? Um, it would probably help with the addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, you think that the a lot of the problem is um, kind of systemic. Like if they don't have anywhere else to sleep and they have to sleep in this area where. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's something that's causing large groups of people to experience trauma from from falling asleep. So Avis will lightly touch her. He'll do remove sickness. Eat his blessings upon the child. Wait, we were looking for somebody Hold to go on. get drugs. <laughs> Let me do my thing. Pray. Show me where I, these others are. That perhaps I can save more from the spiders in the night. You know the uh, the alley on the uh, on the far side of the uh, the courthouse. Mm -hmm. That is where you have been sitting. It has. The. Uh, They come and take the dead away every day. Two or three more every night. It's horrific, but um, there is no place else. I mean, should try to stay grouped together with as many people as possible, but 
When you're alone, that's when they get you. Well, I will not abandon you, child. Let's show me the way. Okay. Um, she leads you south. And she points out a... Um, south through this like big alleyway right here. Uh, you're heading towards the gallow fields. Um, that alleyway splits left and right, and there's a tattoo parlor um, to the right uh, called the Sepia Needle. Mm -hmm. um, to the left, the um, the alleyway narrows as you come out into the uh, the gallow fields, if that's the direction that you wanted to go. Is that the direction that she says that the, she was sinking into the muck? No, that was in her dreams. Or this is where the spiders were crawling over. In the in uh, Nightmare Alley where she slept. I mean, everywhere yeah. in her dreams. Yeah. I say this is under the assumption that it may still induce the dreams, but that the spiders might actually be there. Yeah, you like you never know, right? I mean. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's a little convenient that the brother of the spider. Yeah. Um, so Avis will clasp her hand and there is safe haven in mine. Return there and I will send more. You will not be alone. What do I do about tonight? I will. You will sleep in my temple. It'll be fine. Yita will protect us. She nods and okay. She said, "I don't wish to go that way. I wish to. Uh, I will take the big streets." Yes, yes. I don't. Uh... Take away your be safe. Okay. Thank you for showing me. So you head down, and there's um, there's a whole bunch of like. Scummy looking dudes. Um, as you're walking, um, you guys kind of stick out as uh, fairly wealthy. And um, one of the men is kind of uh, about four, four and a half feet tall. He's kind of hunched over. He's got like a bulbous nose. And, um, so Ava's height. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's. Um, He's got like a like almost like a crooked spine, and he's got like um, really stringy, really thin uh, hair, uh, almost like strands of hair that he should have shaved off a long time ago. Because there's uh, there's like an inch between strands, and uh, he kind of rubs his hands together and he says, "Whoa, seeing the sights are you." Yes, yes. Looking for a good time, are we? No? Oh, pardon me then. I'll follow it. Yeah. yeah, it depends on what kind of good time you're offering. Well, what, what do you need? What does uh, what do lords and ladies such as yourselves uh, require in these uh, these dank and lightless halls of debauchery? He's, the, the, the the buildings in here are fairly tall, um, so it's almost like you're almost like blocked out from the sun in this area. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just seeing the sights, are you uh, taking a shot? Hey, I, I look at him and say, "We seek something." Exotic, something even the Thagwa would um, enjoy. I don't, don't know who that person is, but uh, what would uh, for Thagwa, what would this for Thagwa enjoy? Uh, I was hoping he'd take a hint. Fine. He clearly doesn't know what that word is. Right. Okay. But I'm intrigued. What is, uh, what is it? Who is this for Thagwa? 
I just look at him. How are your dreams at night? <laughs> oh, troubled, troubled as are everyone's. Yes, yes. That's why we. Uh, that's why we partake. Do you dream of the spider, or do you dream of the the stars? Oh, this, I dream of neither, my friend. I don't live around here. But uh, for uh, a few silver coins, I could uh, perhaps show you a good time, if that's what you're looking for. I don't think you're exotic enough. Ah. Well then, good day to you. And to you, sir. He kind of skips up the alleyway. Everybody checks their purses. Yeah. Did he strike us as a con or as a, just someone who deals in watered-down stuff? Or? Yeah, he could probably could have got you some watered-down stuff, maybe even the real deal, I don't know. Didn't get that far. Yep. He was gross. He was, but as far as, um, there's not too many people that you're looking around going, well, that, that person seems pretty healthy. I don't know if you can tell this or not, but... Our characters don't seem to be avid drug users, so yeah, this is probably a new thing for any of our characters to just dive in and be like, "I want to use some drugs." Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, where do I? Hey, man, where can I get some really good weed? Yeah, yeah. Tommy could ham it up; it would totally stand out, but it would be funny. <laughs> I'm, st- I'm still trying to indulge in sriracha. So, you know. <laughs> the um... I grew up watching a show called SCTV, and there was uh, there was a skit called Undercover Mountie. There's <laughs> a guy guy'd be sitting on a horse with a Hawaiian shirt, going, "Hey man, where can I get some really good weed?" <laughs> That's a Canadian thing. It yeah, was pretty uh, funny. We got SCTV in reruns, so yeah. Yeah, Harold Ramis. So you guys are kind of sticking out like a sore thumb. Um, you walk through. Um, I, do you want to go into the gallo fields? We're here. Okay. The gallo fields are here. You can see on the map. I'll just throw your minis on there just so you can get a look of the scale and stuff like that. There is a uh, river that runs along this little path. It's almost. It's more like a culvert. Um, it is not sewage and there's a little bridge over top of it. You can see the courthouse in the distance off in the, um, in the hazy mist uh, at the far end of the field. And you can see in this area here, um, is, it looks like the remnants of poles that probably once were the, uh, the gallows since been dissembled. Uh, now it's just a bunch of, uh, bunch of pillars without a platform um, magic in the water magic in the uh the gallows area uh, it doesn't appear to be uh there's people in the fields uh just kind of like camped out and uh there's the odd business and stuff like that the old storefront everything's pretty run down everything's pretty um pretty destitute this is um this area of town is like the lowest of the the low. There's only um, this is where you go when you have nowhere else to go. And if you follow through in this area here, I'm going to move uh, Luna over. Like down this way is the way to get to Nightmare Alley. This here is uh, roughly uh, where that courthouse is. Taking up that, that giant bit of space there. So we need to explore that area. We need to go down to Nightmare Alley. Yeah. That's where, they're taking oh, That's where Luna is. And now myself. Yeah, okay. So you get out right. to uh, Nightmare Alley. Let's see here. So Nightmare Alley on the, uh, on the main map is right here. You guys, uh, you see where I'm 
put the new circle. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the courthouse um, where the arrow is. This alley that flows back all the way through. Um, let's see if I've got a description of Nightmare Alley for you. I should. And it looks like there's a little bit of a disturbance at Nightmare Alley. Let's see, where's the story here? Okay, Nightmare Alley. Uh, the marches, the marshes, characteristic tangle of plank and rope bridges crisscross um, several stories above this narrow, trash-strewn alley. Shiver attics, including those currently slumbering in the street, have transformed the alley into a makeshift flophouse, which terminates at a hovel, um, sheltering a rusted potbelly stove. And there are. Um, it looks like a couple dozen guardsmen uh, gathered in this area and also a man that Luna recognizes. Let's see here. Uh, I think you guys have encountered this gentleman before. While you were um, pursuing leads uh, regarding the Book of Ibon. Okay, maybe it's just a picture. He seemed to be the, um, the man in charge of the investigation. This gentleman. Let's see here. Um, Luna recognizes him immediately as a, like a magistrate. His name is Jagard Stanton. And uh, guards are going around and they're questioning um, groups of shiver addicts. And like I said, there's about a dozen of them. And then they're, they're kind of milling around. Does this guy know me, or does he, what does he know me for? He doesn't know you, but you know him. You know this was this was the crooked guy that you were following. Oh, we couldn't quite get the goods on him, but you knew he was up to something. He was taking bribes, and uh, you didn't really get what he was up to completely. But uh, yeah, you followed him for a couple days, and uh, he seemed like he was um, had his fingers in several pies. Okay, I tell the potty. This guy's a little shady. We just sort of listen in on his questioning? Yeah, he seems to be um, trying to get to the bottom of a uh, death that occurred in this alley. Oh, let's see here. The name he's... He's looking for a, a, a. He's concerned about the death of a person by the name of Frell. Um, you're not really sure who that is. You can, you can roll on it, of course, but. Yeah, even. I don't think you would even really know. Hadn't heard anybody whisper about it in the places where Sunny hangs out. There, there's um. Does anybody have knowledge nobility? Yes, I do. Okay, give me a give me a knowledge nobility roll, and if you come close to that. Okay. Um, think that there might be a noble uh, family that has a last name of Frell. Mm. I'll share that with the party. Hey, I heard about this noble named Frell. At least there's a family with that name. I wonder if it's connected. It's a addicted noble that got ganked. Uh, is, it, is, it, 
does it seem like they were mugged here? Or can we get the gist of his questioning? Yeah, he wants to know, um, you know, um, what were the circumstances? Um, you know, uh, how long had this person been staying in this alley kind of thing? What, what, what's been going on? He, um, everybody in here kind of just knows each other to look at each other. There's not really, don't really know each other by name so much, but you get, um, you kind of get a vibe that there is, um, there's a, there's a pair of people that are maybe looking for a, a way out of the alleyway, um, without attracting this man's attention. They look destitute. They look, um, uh, pretty hard up. Uh, they don't look like they're, they don't look like killers or anything like that. Uh, it looks like they're trying to avoid, uh, this man's questions. Do we follow those two people? Let's see if they get out of the alleyway or maybe, um, I don't know. I want to, I want to try and help one get out. Okay. How are you going to do that? I will have, uh, I can't cast spells easily. That's hard, right? Yeah, you stick out like a sore thumb. Um, you can cast spells. I mean, people might not know exactly what you're doing. Right. So you got that going for you. Um, well, I'll just hide behind the party, cast Unseen Servant, have the Unseen Servant go to one of this guy's men and kind of just like shake his cloak or or tap his face just to, for him to freak out okay All and right. then while that's i'm gonna move over to one of the guys and say i'm here to protect you follow me and i'll make him invisible okay so there, there's two people there's um there's a man and a woman. They're not connected in any way, it doesn't appear. Well, they, they look like they are together. And they're like trying to maybe wait for the right time. They're lo- you can tell that they're looking for the right time to maybe get up and surreptitiously walk out of this alley uh, without before the questioning gets to them. That's the vibe okay. that you get. I'll, I'll, I'll say... Uh... I'll go to the lady. I can save you. Just do what I say. Okay. So the uh, the distraction that you cause. Let's. Uh, is anybody else going to key in with that distraction? Yeah, Bakai and I will go near them and start listening in on them, like Boris. Are we within ninety feet of them? Yeah. If you want to be. No question. Uh, okay, if one has to make a will save, then they're aware of an effect being upon them, whether or not they make the save or or don't make the save, right? Uh, it depends on the effect. You have, act- you have to actually have the will to resist whatever's happening to you. It would depend. I would. I would. I would, I would make a, a judgment call on that. I think probably. Yeah. I'm actually considering the, the use of fascinate. The I was. The, I was thinking that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't want it to be perceived as an attack or an act of aggression. Yeah, exactly. I, and it wouldn't be. Uh, in this instance, it's not like you're overtly casting a spell at somebody like, whoa, like a big flashy hypnotic effect or anything. Yeah. Like you're, you're doing some kind of performance. Try, trying to support what Luna is doing and making it easier for them to get away by fascinating the person whose attention they do not want. Okay. They want their, their attention towards... I mean, that's what bars do. They want the attention, right? We're attention horse. So um, let me look at the map again and find out what... I'm, uh, so we're on the corner here. Where is this activity taking place that we're trying to get them out? Uh, let's, let's say that these guys are... Um... I'll I'll throw a mini on there or something like that. Let's see here. Token. 
Twitter. Let's say that they're somewhere over here and that the guards are uh, like making their way up the alleyway here. Uh, let's say like right around in here. I'm on the Gallows Fields map. Is that? What oh, okay. No, I'm on the, the major map. Okay. That oh, one so there. they're taking place behind the courthouse. Yeah, they're, the, you guys are in Nightmare Alley right now. Okay. The, there's a body that turned up in Nightmare Alley. It's not there anymore, um, and this man seems to be investigating. Okay. Well, let's try it. See what happens. I've actually, believe it or not, as much as I've played bards, never used the fascinate ability. All right. So. Have at it, sir. Yeah. I'll put a mark there. Is there a maximum amount of people you can fascinate, or just anybody in a certain age? I'm not sure what it says. Skill minus four and immune. I'm not sure what those effects mean. But reading through the description, fascinate. Where are you? Current bard can use this performance to cause one or more creatures from fascinating with them. Each creature to be fascinated must be within 90 feet, able to see or he and hear the bard, and capable of paying attention. Okay. okay. Yeah, so pretty much everybody is... I have to see them, okay. The distraction of a nearby... Oh, we're not combat. No one's fighting, so that's not a problem right now. For every three levels, the board has a team beyond first. He can target additional creature. So at five, that sounds like one, one additional creature. Oh, yeah. okay. So you have to specifically try to fascinate him specifically. Yeah, each creature within the range receives a will save, and that's 10 plus half the level plus charisma modifier. Okay. The creature succeeds, the bard cannot... If they succeed, I can't attempt to fascinate in front of which it will pass or fail, right? If, the fa if it fails, the creature sits quietly and observes the performance for as long as the bard continues to maintain it. While oh. fascinated, the target takes the minus four penalty to all the skill checks. Okay, that's where the minus four is taking place. In the, yeah, and you want that for the their perception yeah. checks. Such as perception, yep. Uh, of course, if there's a threat, someone draws a sword or combat begins, that, that causes issues. So no one, no one should be doing that. It's a compulsion, mind-affecting ability, so if he has resistances to that, it would help him. Okay. And I believe you uh, make well, your role. So it's I'm gonna it's going to be a performance kind of like Les Miserables, where she's taken in the scenery and just kind of just breaks out into this song about how the people here are suffering and and she wishes a hero or somebody could just help these people. You know, just kind of practicing through a song like that. So there you go. We'll see what happens. Uh, for me, I can make the perform check, but I don't think that matters. I think it's more of does he resist the DC check? So, I don't know who to put the effect on. Just roll it. Okay. I believe the targets need to make will saves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's a preset figure, yeah. or do you make a performance it is. check? It has, a, it has a performance check is for flavor. How I read it is for the fascinate to work. They have to roll a, a will save and resist the set. Um, yeah, it's right. okay. So the yeah, set it's... number is ten plus the half spard level, so that makes it twelve plus my charisma, so it's fifteen. They need to make a will save of fifteen. Okay. If they succeed, they just—they're not fascinated. They can notice it or not notice it, however you want to do it. Okay. But if they fail, they're compelled to watch. All right. So he's uh, he's asking some questions and he's going. You there? This blah, 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 blah. and then um, he notices you, and he watches. And uh, a couple of the other guards are kind of like um, they're paying attention to you too. Um, okay, now's your chance. Do it. <laughs> yeah, do it. Okay, so you guys slip out of the alley. <clears throat> I'm not really noticed, but I'm pretty much everybody kind of turns and um you even make two iron ticks a couple a couple people toss iron ticks your way and the most destitute of the destitute 
um, you throw <laughs> throw a little performance on here, and um, you bring a little levity and light to a um, pretty grim situation. Uh, I don't know how long your yeah, I think your performance can go on as long as you want it to go on. Correct. It, the, the the fascinate happens per round that I spend the bardic performance. Okay. And I I do have the lingering performance, like so a stop, and it would go two rounds further past the stopping point. Um, I I, I kind of want to keep my eye on, on what Luna's doing, and if they get away, they okay, don't stop. But I don't know how many how many rounds that takes. So obviously the goal here is to give them enough time to get away. So two to three rounds seems reasonable to me. Yeah, um, definitely. I I would say probably, I I would say two uses of your bardic performance okay. say six rounds um Alrighty. can do that yep definitely that's the best use of fascinating i've ever done <laughs> it's also the worst <laughs> it's the only time all righty well success all right so she'll pick up the iron ticks um Kind of like reluctantly, like that was not her intent, but it's appreciative that those willing to give that, you know what I mean? So you guys escape, um, make your way. We didn't catch the guy's name, did we? The uh, interrogator. The interrogator, his name is Jagard Stanton. Oh, there um, it is on the picture. Yeah. Uh, Luna is familiar with him having surreptitiously followed him for a couple days while she was between um, between adventures. Um, she even snuck into his office one day invisibly and rooted through his stuff. Uh, so um, it seemed like he had... Um, she listened into a meeting that he had um, with... Um, it sounded like maybe a, maybe a noble... Um, Somebody who wanted, um, somebody wanted things to not quite go as smoothly for um, one of his uh, competitors, and um, and Stanton uh, guaranteed that uh, yes, the um, yeah the waste well the waste walkers won't be available that day in that area, and she really get the whole vibe of what was going on there specifically, but she got the vibe that this guy could be bribed and um, that he was amenable to um, seeing things not done in a manner befitting his station. Like, he's a magistrate. He's responsible for um, certain things in the town, in the town government. That um, there, and there's there seems to be like a section of town that he's letting slip um, intentionally. She got that vibe. She didn't know why. She didn't know who these other people were. Um, following nobility into the noble district is a little dangerous in and of its own right. The place is extremely well patrolled and guarded. Um, she did so invisibly for a little bit. Um, Prudence indicated she leave off. She followed this guy around a little bit, um, not invisibly. And uh, he would go from one place to another to a meeting to here and there. And um, it seemed to be sometimes it'd be money changing hands. But then the rest of your adventures took precedence over. But she specifically picked him out of a city full of people as specifically corrupt. And here he was in this alleyway. So she's escorting these two people. Um, the man says, thank you for, uh, for that. Uh, my name is Ronaldo and this is my, my lady friend, Nomi. We, uh, thank you for that. We, uh, I don't know how to thank you. And the guys are hustling down Carter street, um, probably South towards the street of the gods. Why why did you not want to be questioned by that man? Well, I uh, we knew Frel. We knew the the man he was um, he was investigating. And uh, 
Well, we knew things about him. Oh, like what? Well, he was the son of... Um, well, the son of... Uh, I, 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 I thank you and everything, but um, um, I don't know your name. And um, he, he looks like he's um, coming off a, a shiver jack. He's kind of shaky and um, kind of nervous. And he's wondering who you are. And you're hustling him away. And you go down the street. And it's busy. You know, you've kind of disappeared into the crowd. And you can tell that he may be uh, thinking about bolting. But um, his lady friend not being in the best health is maybe keeping him from just running. powerful wizard and i've been investigating that man <laughs> for a long time yeah a powerful wizard yes yes well uh said that, that's the sort of thing that uh that frel and nomi and i were uh had our fingers involved in as well we um we took down a um are you not you're not with them are you you're not uh, retribution we uh we didn't know at the time that it was um it was a temple. We um, we uh, quite stumbled on it uh, quite by accident. So if uh, if it's your people that um, that we've wronged, we apologize, and um, I'll have you know that I don't know where the uh, I don't know where the book is. Uh, I don't know what Frel has done with it. If that's what we're talking about here. Well, I like books. Tell me about this book. Oh, you that okay? Well, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I I see. Um, and then you guys are hustling down. You get you're getting close to um, the uh, area of uh, the Street of the Gods where the prophet uh, was always like standing, and he's got his. Um, now it's only six. Uh, six acolytes gathered around him where at one point there was nine and it's a different guy it's a different man and he's going through his um his his speech about the the window and you can down the street you can see that the church of Ita and he's looking um this man here Reynaldo's looking around and um says no me no me uh he says, "I I don't suppose I could Im- impose upon you for um, for two silver coins, could I? And then um, perhaps meet you at a later time, and um, and and perhaps discuss things with you." I have a place in town, don't I? Or no? I, I don't know, Luna. We've never in all this time we've never yeah. we've never followed Luna home. You know, okay, yeah, I guess. you know that Zed's place is uh, literally just around the corner, and there's also the Church of Utah, which is also literally right around the corner. If you guys were, say, right here on the on the main map, I'll go to Zed's place, and I'll have Z- um, Zed's place I'll is have, right there. I'll have. My- my familiar that speaks common go to the party and say, meet it, Zed. <laughs> okay. A, yeah. Boss. It, it's a raven, right? It's yeah. meet it, Zed. So you're you bringing know? homeless drug addicts to my place? Thanks. <laughs> Two of them. I'll, Thieves, I'll too. Thieves, too. <laughs> nice. I, I, I have 200... 53 gold rills. I'll pull out the sack and go, you get one if you come with me. If they steal my Scott Pilgrim yeah. collection. Okay, okay. Well, I see. Yes, yes. Here's the jingle of the coin, and uh, you could probably tell that from the jingle of the coin, he can probably determine what sort of coin it is. So he's quite not... Okay, yes, yes. No, no me and I will... Um, I, 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 I need to get her some more shiver, though. Uh, she's quite ill. Uh, uh, we have a healer. What's what's so like some sort of uh, medicine woman, some sort of um, 
some yes. sort of um, alchemist or something like that? Yes. You say we, you mean um, the royal we? You I, I'm a very powerful wizard. I don't travel alone. Well, I am uh, I'm Rinaldo, and this is uh, the love of my life, Nomi. She's, uh, she's not well. So yes, we'll, yes. we'll go to your friend's house if you if you offer assistance. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, do, 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 little montage. Meet at Zed's. Is this? Yes, yeah, something that we all meet up and yeah, we all know. Go. Yeah, and and you know that um, w once once the fascination wears off on Stanton, he. You don't know that he notices that he was fascinated or not, but you know that it, he noticed that he was distracted by it. And he, he says to you, move along, move along there, Mrs. Uh, we're investigating. Good luck. Hope you catch the guy. And she complies 100%. Okay. He kind of looks at you a little side-eyed, but... All right, everybody meets at Zed. You should probably... Probably out in the uh, in the hallway at Zed's house. Um, Zed and uh, Bakai are probably. Oh, I'm, I'm sure the party has ways to get in, keys, or they know things. It's not like I'm hiding it. Plenty of people have crashed there. Okay. Yeah, we're into your place. Yeah. Yeah. All, All right. dimension door. In. Just open Somebody the door. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. That'll do it. That'll work too. Yep. Right through right, the I window. Get to, yeah, I got to get some wards to put up. Because that darn Luna is just. It keeps. Coming in and taking my good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as soon as we're as soon as we're in and we see the homeless drug addicts, Arthur's just going to say to uh, Zed, "Just fine company you keep." It's it's Luna. It's in her. Uh, I just go to the uh, cupboard and pull out a jug of wine and start pouring glasses for people. <laughs> Isn't that what you're doing, Lankmar? Yes, that's exactly what you do in Lancamore. Well, somebody talk to them and get some info, because I'm not very persuasive outside of using magic. In that case, well, yeah, they said going they... To, uh, are they just going to approach the... Is there, like a, is there like a table and chairs? Oh, yeah. Oh, right, yes. Mr. Mrs., please sit down. Yes, yes, I'm, um, I'm Reynaldo. This is... Uh, my love, Naomi. She you have to forgive her. She's not well. Mm, I can see that. <coughs> My name is Arthur Belair, and I would like to ask you a few questions, if you would allow me to. Oh, absolutely. We, uh, you, we are in your debt for uh, for this accommodation. It's lovely. This wine is delightful. I'm... Arthur, Arthur, like stifles a small chuckle. <laughs> I'm it's sure. cake bread. Of course, it's good. <laughs> can I tell that they're both? using currently oh yeah you especially know me like you can even see um injection points on her arm which is an unusual way to use mm. uh did luna inform us the general like like the general stuff the guy already told us. Ah, yeah, she can kind of like meet meet you guys outside and say, yeah, kind of catch you up. There's um some sort of nobility involved, and um, there was some sort of robbery that went wrong. It's about all she got, really. Something about a book. But you mentioned a temple too. They had stumbled upon a temple. Exactly. Oh. Where is this temple? Well, she says, um, well, let's see. Um, Friel, uh, Nomi and myself, we were um, we were contracted by a, um, a gang, I guess you could sort of call them. Um, they the, uh, I don't know, some speakers or something, something whisperers or dreamers or something they um they wanted us to um procure for them a um a list of items from a uh, uh 
an area, an area north of the Street of the Gods, and of course we uh, we did so. We uh, so we didn't realize it was, a, it was an old temple, but we made our way in, and um, we uh, we managed to um, get a fair amount of shiver, and um, we also. Um, a fine set of silverware, uh, uh, fancy gold brooch uh, like a butterfly, uh, a mummified corpse of some, um, it looked like some kind of small demon, a uh, weird silver key, um, a blue parakeet in a bronze cage, and a rather sizable book with a, uh, a lock clasp. We, uh, Frel, uh, Frel had seen to, um, to the fencing of the, um, most of the loot. Uh, some of it I'd probably, uh, will turn up, um, at the, uh, the Iron Tycoon, more than likely. He tried there several times to, uh, to sell the book. He tried a couple of the, uh, the book retailers to sell the book, but, uh, he had the impression that it was worth much more than they were, uh, they were offering, so he um, he held out. Um, I'll pull out the book. Was this the book? Oh no, no, no! It was uh, it was much bigger. It was um, he describes it. It seems like of a size that sort of was similar to the book of Ibon. And he describes it. And um, his description of it, at first you think, oh my God, is this guy talking about the Book of Ibon? But then he describes it, and it's no, it's, um, it's thick, um, probably about six inches thick, about two feet across, had a, had a, a leather band and a lock. But on the, um, on the cover, it had... Um, like a metal plate, and in the metal plate was like a half sleeping eye, so you know that it wasn't the the book of Ibon, and that um, they found um, some somewhere in the city they found this they found their friend Freud killed. Um, we were trying to get away. I don't know. The specifics of uh, the investigation. He was sleeping with us in, in Nightmare Alley, but um, we've um, he didn't turn up last night. You said you saw him dead, correct? No, no. I, they're they're looking for his killers. They're looking for anybody who might know him. Hmm. So he was actually killed by somebody, not not the, the overdose. Yeah, we don't know for sure. We don't know the. Um... Don't know the specifics of that quite yet. Speaking of which, I do not mean to pry, but I can tell by the look of you that you're not well. Yes, yes, it's a uh, dreadful, dreadful, uh, dreadful sleeping rough these days. Mm. Have you uh, occasion to take a walk down Nightmare Alley? No. The. Uh, How would one get started in such an adventure? I'm familiar with Nightmare, but I'm not familiar with what exactly you're doing. I'm not too familiar with Shiver. Well, he's uh, hoped to uh, in a in a group kind of uh, be the one that the spiders didn't claim. Mm. And you shiver to do that, correct? Shiver to stay awake as long as you can, of course, but fair, eventually the money runs out and, uh, well, you or, or your constitution, like my dear Naomi here. When you do have the money, where do you go to acquire shiver, actually? Ah, uh, lots of time in the night market. Um, 
there's the uh, the fountain by the night market you can go to um every once in a while we would uh we would go to um the shoals or rook's roost uh sometimes there's shiver dens uh there's better places to sleep off of uh A shiver jag, so to speak. Uh, yes, yes. The, uh, the, um, I don't, I do wish, uh, Frel had of, um, just sold the book. We could have just moved on from what we did. But, uh, I get the distinct impression that there was, uh, others looking for him. And, um, those we took the tome from probably would be foremost among them. One can certainly imagine. There was another one among us um, who knew that we were uh, friends of Frel. It was a um, rather dreadful sort. He was, um, his name was Langston. Yeah. He's been sleeping rough in the alley as well. I didn't, uh, he wasn't with Naomi and I at the time, but uh, that uh, that magistrate might find out what we know from, from him. At least our names, anyway. So we shouldn't, uh, shan't be going back, I don't think. It's a good idea to have do you, that. Have you any idea where he could be? Frel? I'm afraid he's probably passed on if they're looking for his killer. He was uh, a man of Not some... Frail. Oh, Frail. Langston. You were... Langston. Langston. I, he's never far from the alley. Probably he might have been in the alley at the time. I don't... It's a loose end. Can we the, get a map to this temple? I can show you where it is. Yes, yes. The um, one place I might want to look, if I were you too, is the. Um, you thought about um, selling the book to um, one of the book dealers. Um, the um, the lady that uh, that interprets dreams, the um, uh, what's her name? What's her name? Nomi, Nomi. Uh, and then Nomi says, uh, Madam Carrington. <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. Madam Carrington. Give us the knowledge a local on that one. Probably, uh, probably like nobility, too, or no? Mm, no, uh, this is definitely, definitely not nobility. Okay, I have no idea, no idea who that is. This is, um, let's see here. She, uh, if, if you ask him, he'll tell you that, um, say, um, a diviner of some sort, she, uh, she claims to have some sort of sight. Um, all her sight doesn't, uh, doesn't enable her to, uh, to be able to move around. She's quite paralyzed and she's, um, quite beholden to her, uh, her spirits as it were. Frel was, uh, or Frel was uh, of the mind that uh, she understood the significance of this book and that she would pay him top dollar for it, or, or top coin for it. But uh, as far as I know, that um, was his last stop. But yes, I, we, can, 
We can describe to you the location of the uh, of the warehouse. That would be most useful. Yep, so he describes a area off of uh, Temple Street in the Marsh District, um, north of the Night Market. Uh, it was a second story, um, kind of, um, it looked, he, said, he described that it looked abandoned and that um, they snuck in through the third floor um, down through a window. And um, there was some sort of some sort of right going on at the time, um, and they managed to somehow get into the back room without being noticed, and slipped out with um, a bunch of what they thought was, you know, junk or stuff they could sell. Uh, turns out something was worth killing for. Probably this book. But we'll pick it up there next time. Don't forget to give us our 1,961 experience points. <laughs> Let's see here. There is... Not that specific number yeah. carries yeah. any meaning whatsoever. <laughs> I get the, we get the savior bonus, yeah. Let's see here. I'm going to... This would be an ad hoc experience point award. So let's see here. I would not uh, say no. <laughs> so we're gonna call it that. So you're on the you're oh. on the way. Oh. You know oh. better than I was expecting. Yeah, we're good. I was thinking That's... it could not be any more than five hundred, and I was correct. 661 left. And then another thousand. Uh, oh, you're right. Okay. Well, still. All right. That was cool. So two weeks we're on? Yep, two weeks we are on. Okay. That's going to be on the 8th. The 8th, yes. That's, um, I don't think Damn there's anything. The eclipse. <laughs> oh, that's right, too. Oh, spooky. <laughs> Yeah, it'll Spooky. be nighttime, so it won't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Awesome. All right, have a good night. All right, night, everybody. See you. Good night. Night.